So I'm here with Lance Lucero, and he's from Celestron. We're going to be talking today all about the StarSense Explorer technology, which is an amazing thing for the beginner astronomers and the advanced astronomers alike. So Lance, can you just tell us a little bit today about what makes the StarSense Explorer different, and how is this changing the hobby uh, for all types of astronomers? Sure thing. Uh, this is actually revolutionary because one of the hardest things for a new person getting a telescope for the first time is finding something interesting to look at that is not the moon or a bright planet, basically the only things you can see with the naked eye. You want to see the interesting things like the ring nebula or you know some, some of the, like the eagle nebula. You've read about them, you've seen pictures of them, but you have no idea how to find them. Right. In the old days, it meant getting out your sky atlas and trying to match the stars and trying to figure out where you were with your finder scope. Well, no more. What we have done is we have taken the computer that everybody has in their back pocket and utilized it to plate solve the location of the scope with no alignment necessary. What it does is it will, the camera will, on your phone will look into a mirror that is located right down in here. Yep. That allows it to see the sky of where the scope is pointed. Um, you leave the scope alone and after a couple of seconds it plate solves, tells you exactly where it's pointed. So then you just use the map on the screen to determine what object you want to see. You tap on it. If you don't know what you want to look at, there is tonight's best, which is a list of all the greatest objects that you can see. You simply select the object, and now you move the scope manually. Um, arrows form here. Oh, wow. And as you get closer, the arrows get smaller. And when you finally see it zooms in, and when you finally lock it on target, you wait. It's plate solving to verify that it's there. Light turns green, and when it does, the object is in your eyepiece field. So you still have the red, red dot sight if you choose to use if it, you but choose it's really to use not it, it's necessary completely anymore. not necessary anymore. Excellent. Um, so when using this app, uh, I know that there are other features of Sky Safari that um, is running in the background here uh, that allow you to see and learn more about the night sky. And I think that's something that this also includes? Absolutely. There's, uh, for most of the brightest objects, uh, there are uh, audio files that you can play while you're actually observing to teach you about it. So I can uh, be looking through the eyepiece and learning and as I'm... And it's telling you about what you're looking at. If you're looking that's at amazing. the Andromeda Galaxy, it'll give you facts and figures about the Andromeda Galaxy. I see this as being a great fit for a lot of families as well. Yes, Can you absolutely. tell us a little bit more about some of the other options that are available? Sure. So right now what we're looking at is the DX version. This is a little bit of the higher end, but still retails for about $300 or so. The main advantage to this is that it does have altitude and uh, azimuth slow motion controls. So as you know, if you're looking at a planet under high magnification, it drifts across the field of view pretty quick. This is just a quick and easy way to keep it centered as you're showing other people the targets. We have a slightly scaled down version of this. Uh, this is a 114, um, but it does have um, your simple yoke mount uh, of old, the way you've, we've seen these on entry level scopes, with a slow motion altitude rod that allows you to help track. Uh, but still has just the manual motion left and right with no other slow motion control. We're going from a refractor with a lens to a reflector with a mirror. Exactly. Yep. And to be honest with you, we do have a Newtonian version of the DX, and we okay. also have a refractor version of the LT series. Excellent. Um, but to be honest with you, the, the one everybody's loving and why we actually created this and had this in mind was to go big Dobbs. aperture and to go with the Dobbs. We have an 8-inch and a 10-inch currently. And uh, again, the dock fits the, on top. This is the this 10 This is the 10, yeah. And uh, again, just largest aperture that we can get with this simple technology of being able to use your cell phone to plate solve and figure out where you are and where you want to be. I feel like the Dob gives you an intimate understanding of the night sky. You're literally hugging the scope yes. as you're moving your way around the sky. And exactly. It, it, it really takes uh, the feeling of success uh, one or two times to really feel like, wow, I'm learning these things as I go, and I feel like the Dob is the excellent way to learn the night sky in a way that uh, only a Dob can provide. And now with the StarSense Explorer technology, with the Safari run, uh, Sky Safari running in the background, it's giving you uh, a whole new appreciation for astronomy beyond uh, just finding objects. Now you're learning about what they truly are. Exactly. Um, which is, is next level. All right, thank you so much. And My as pleasure. you can see, uh, we have 
an amazing lineup here with the StarSense Explorer technology, from the Dobbs uh, to the small reflectors to the refractors. There are options at every price point. There are options um, for every person. Uh, we've got the eight inch Dob and the 10 inch Dob. So you, know, you can consider that when you're out and uh, going to a dark sky site when you go to make uh, a purchase, if you're interested, you have options. And options are always great. The technology is the same for all of these scopes. And as I said earlier, the best fit for this I see is for families who are trying to learn the night sky, uh, but it can be something that can kind of grow with you. So even the most advanced users have options uh, and we'll continue to learn for years to come.